The wastes of the modern Fallout games are rife with adventure, intrigue, and interesting people to befriend. Or shoot. It's easy to get swept up in the desolation, but it's even easier to overlook the fact that the wastes are home to many stories. And not all of those stories are particularly savory. Double check that your power armor has a biological waste disposal system because things are about to get weird. The Dunwich Building If you've played Fallout 3, chances are that you've explored the heck out of that map. And if you have, then you might have run across a location called the Dunwich Building. Fans of H.P. Lovecraft might notice the reference to the Dunwich Horror, so you can already expect to find some otherworldly shenanigans. Upon entering, you're greeted by a bunch of bodies and ghouls running amok, with the occasional glowing one hanging around to give you a hard time. Deep in the building is an entrance to an older part of the ruins where players can experience supernatural phenomena like flashbacks, doors that open by themselves, and disappearing objects. Also, there's an obelisk being worshipped by ghouls with a woman climbing out of it. So yeah, have fun with that. The McClellan Family Townhome Speaking of literary references, the McClellan Family Townhome seems to be a reference to a Ray Bradbury short story called There Will Come Soft Rains, which has to do with a robotic house that still tries to perform its duties, not realizing that its family passed away in a nuclear war. Only three of the McClellans are accounted for in Fallout 3 – the boy, Muffy the dog, and a Mr. Handy robot. How may I serve you, master? But that's where things get creepy. If you choose to have the robot walk Muffy, it will hover over to the dog outside and try to get it to stand up – or move at all. If you have it read to the kids, it will recite the poem to his remains in a dilapidated bunk bed. Yikes. Vault 22 When you're wandering through the deserts of the Mojave Wasteland in Fallout New Vegas, you wouldn't really expect to find an overabundance of greenery. That is, until you find Vault 22. Inside the vault are weeds, vines, and some very angry humanoid plants. Yep, vault Tech was trying to experiment with plants and accidentally created a fungus that was toxic to humans, with spores that mutated them into monsters. An oasis in the Mojave Wasteland, this is not. Sierra Madre in what is probably one of the best pieces of DLC that any Fallout game has to offer, Dead Money offers players a vacation in Sierra Madre, the creepiest casino you'll ever witness. You wake up in this city with a bomb collar around your neck. Sounds fun already, right? Even worse, that collar's being controlled by a creepy dude named Father Elijah. Play stupid. Play clever. Make the mistake of saying no. That collar on your neck will go off and take your head with it. What makes this part of the game so creepy and disturbing is the overall atmosphere, and not just because of the deadly gas clouds and the literal atmosphere. You also have to deal with nearly indestructible ghosts and radioactive cockroaches. With the constant threat of bodily harm looming around every corner, dead money makes for a very intense gaming experience. The Pikmin Gallery we're just going to cut straight to the chase. This is probably the most nope-inducing place in all of the Commonwealth in Fallout 4. The house is made up of three floors, and each one is a doozy. As you make your way to the basement, you'll come upon a group of raiders attacking Pikmin himself. It's clear from all of the bodies that Pikmin is some kind of deranged psycho, so you can either leave him to his fate or rescue him. If you choose the latter, he'll gift you with a key that opens up a safe containing a weapon called Pikmin's Blade. Just be aware that if you save him, you'll have saved a creepy murderer who paints with the blood of his victims. Good luck living with that. The Dunwich Borers As if the Lovecraft references could be contained to just one Fallout game. The Dunwich Borers in Fallout 4 is more or less a sequel to the Dunwich Building from Fallout 3. If you decide to travel to this godforsaken place, you'll find what looks to be an ordinary quarry. Sure, it's full of ghouls and traps, but if you can manage to clear it, you can enter an underground portion that houses something… paranormal. Sounding familiar yet? The prize for getting through another set of supernatural flashbacks and armies of ghouls is a nifty weapon called Krem's Tooth, which is located in a pool of irradiated water. This weapon was used as a sacrificial knife and is another reference to H.P. Lovecraft, so this section of the game gets extra creep points for that. Vault 11 
Now we come to Vault 11, one of the most savage of vault Tech's vaults. It should be common knowledge by now that every vault set up by vault Tech also doubled as an experiment of sorts. Vault 11 housed a social experiment to find out what people would do when told to sacrifice a fellow vault dweller every year. Refusal to pick an annual sacrifice would result in the extermination of all vault dwellers. Sort of like the button in Lost, but more murdery. Greetings, martyr, and welcome. If you're here now, it means you've been offered up as a sacrifice so that your vault can continue to thrive. When you enter the vault, you find four skeletons lying on the ground by the entrance. As you go deeper into the vault, you eventually find out that by the time everyone decided to stop with the sacrifices, only five people were left. Four of them agreed to end their lives and bury the secret of the vaults, but the fifth one decided otherwise and shot the other four before fleeing into the wastes. And that's why you shouldn't play Fallout before bed. Thanks for watching. Click the SVG icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.